We've talked about magnification. That's not the whole story of magnification. Telescopes measure magnification in something that, that, that we, we're going to define here as angular magnification, but they call it magnification when you talk about the magnification of a telescope. So I want to introduce you to these ideas as well. So the angular size of an object takes both its actual size and its distance into account. So if you have an object that's, that's this tall, as tall as this pen, um, the size that it appears to be depends on how far that pen is away. If the pen gets really far away, then its angular size is going to be small and it's going to look small to your eyes. So that's what this um, idea, uh, this section is, is addressing. If we can go back to uh, last semester, we talked about the arc length formula and the arc length S is the distance around an arc. Theta is the angle measured in radians between these two lines. Uh, the radius R and this is the relationship between theta S and R when theta is measured in radians. Doesn't work in degrees. Or you might remember it as S equals R theta. Both the same things. So the angle measured in radians is, the, is called the angular size of an object. The bigger the ang angular size is, the better you can see it. Um, because the more of an angle it, it takes up. So that's going to be approximately equal to the height of the object, which is close to the arc length, if, the, if this angle is small. So as an approximation, the height of the object divided by the distance to the object, which uh, replicates the, the radius. As long as that angle theta is small, then h naught will be a good approximation to the arc length s, and d naught will be a good approximation to the radius. So the angular size is the height of the object divided by the distance. Compare the angular size of a penny held at arm's length with that of the moon. Well, so you hold this penny out at arm's length, um, uh, what will its angular size be? Well, the s size of a penny is 1.9 centimeters. Uh, the arm's length is about 71 centimeters. It's 0.027 radians. What's the size of the moon? Well, we know the height, the diameter of the moon. We know the distance to the moon. And we find that um, its angular size is 0.009 radians. You say, well, hang on just a second. That's smaller than the size of a penny held at arm's length. And that means that I can easily, um, in fact, I can fit three full moons in the width of a penny held at arm's length. And you say, I don't believe it. And I say, go out and try it. And you, I'll make a believer out of you. You can fit three full moons, three times 0.009 is about 0.027. You can fit three full moons into the size of a penny held at arm's length. The moon isn't very big in the sky, even though it seems big, it seems to look big. Define angular momentum, or <laughs> angular magnification. Angular magnification is the ratio of the angular size of an image using some optical system, so theta prime, is this angular size of an image divided by the angular size of the object. So we're going to use a telescope to try and get a, a magnet, an angular magnification M. And this is what telescopes, uh, when you talk about a 100 times telescope, they're talking about angular ma magnification. It's a ratio of those two. So you want the size of the image, angular size, to be bigger than the size of the object so it's really magnified. So magnif magn blah, blah, blah. angular magnification takes both size and distance into account. Telescopes, binoculars, mi microscopes are characterized by their angular magnification, sometimes called just magnification or magnifying power. 
and to increase the angular mag magnification beyond that possible with a magnifying glass, an additional converging lens can be included to pre-magnify. So typically what you see in optical systems like microscopes, telescopes, etc., you have an eyepiece with, that is a lens, and then you have an objective lens that's closer to the object. And um, so for a telescope, um, the magnification turns out to be the negative of the ratio between the focal length of the objective lens. That's the big lens or mirror. So if you're looking inside of your telescope, you see a big lens right about here. That's called the objective lens. It's a big one. And then there's an eyepiece lens, a little one right here, and you can change out the eyepieces and put it inside of your telescope. The ratio of those two focal lengths gives the magnification, angular magnification for a telescope. Uh, we talked with mirrors about spherical aberration. We also get spherical aberration with lenses, and that prevents light rays parallel to the principal axis from converging at a single point. So they, they don't all converge at the same point, and that's embarrassing because you want to have a nice sharp image, and that spherical ab aberration is uh, an enemy to that sharp image. So one thing you can do is to take a diaphragm to stop down this um, this lens, or you can make it non-spherical and make it uh, a different shape so you get better, um, better convergence. The other thing that you, can deal, that you have to deal with with lenses that you don't have to deal with with mirrors is chromatic aberration. And this is embarrassing too. If you have uh, white sunlight coming in, this lens acts like a prism. That's the whole idea. Well, the index of refraction depends on the wavelength, and so the red is going to come to focus, or is going to image at a different place than the violet is. And so uh, you can see through telescopic images, the fringes, a red part of the, you're looking at Venus and you see part of it's red and part of it's violet, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, and one way around that is to use dye, um, to use lenses that have two different, in, two different pieces that are glued together. Achromatic lenses is what they're called, uh, with an index of refraction N1 here, index of refraction N2 here, and so that you can trick those light rays to focus at a single point. But it's never a perfect thing, because if you get red and violet to focus at a particular point, then green might be a little bit off, or orange or yellow might be a little bit off, etc. But it's a good uh, starting point. Um, a lot, of, a lot of people ask me what telescope you should buy. You should look for um, large aperture first. That's the size of the main lens or mirror. Uh, the bigger the better. Why? Because a larger aperture will give you more resolution. It'll not only gather more light, but it'll give you higher resolution, like we talked about, uh, in fact, which we will talk about in a future chapter on diffraction of light. A stable mount. Uh, these Dobsonian mounts are rock solid. Um, it looks like a lazy Susan on the bottom, and, and then the telescope tube just slides up and down, and then the, the base just swivels like a lazy Susan. Uh, they're rock solid, the image doesn't waver. Uh, and then finally, quality optics. Magnifying power doesn't matter. Um, you find ads for uh, telescopes with magnifying power of 600 times. It's um, it, it's not true. You can't see anything through 500 or 600 times magnification. You can always put an eyepiece in there that will magnify something that many times, but all you see is gray mush. Because uh, through our atmosphere, the best you can get is maybe 200 times magnification, or 100 times is the most useful. Um, at the outside, 150 or 200 times magnification is all that you can really expect to see through our murky atmosphere, see clearly.